Hi, my name is Professor Cruz Medina, and one of the questions that we come up with as writers, when we have all this good research, we found all these good sources in databases like JSTOR or even Science Direct, the question comes up, how do we logically put all these together in a nice sequential way? Because it often can seem like there's you know, sort of infinite way of thinking about how to arrange these. Before I even get into this, I like to think about a couple rules of thumb to begin with. First, I like to question whether or not how current is this particular source is. I want to make sure they're probably in the last 10 years or so. We don't want to make sure they're too old. We want to make sure we're staying current so that our research, in fact, is going to be current then too. And the other question I like to ask, are there enough sources? Now, one of the things to consider is that if we're writing anything less than a 10-page research paper, we want to still average something about two page, two sources per page. That way, including our introduction or conclusion, we're still going to have enough material to actually be engaging with throughout that paper. Now, the next question then comes up, how to use these sources once we've located those? So a lot of professors, I believe, like to use annotated bibliographies to help sort of identify and summarize and put all this information together. Now, one of the additional things I like to include when I'm identifying information from my annotated bibliography is using these BEAM categories. BEAM is a framework put forward by Joseph Bizzup back in 2008. And it's a way of being rhetorical and purposeful for how we're in fact using this information to make it most effective for us. To start off, the B stands for background. Now, a background source is any source that the writer or the researcher is asking the audience to think of as fact. So when the researcher has their research question over here, they're going to have a somewhat authoritative source that they look at and think, this provides a good way of thinking about that topic. Now, the next source refers to exhibit. I tend to think of only needing perhaps one exhibit because the exhibit sources are those sources that tend to be your popular sources. They tend to come from things like the news, or they could be a recent book, or even a CD that might have come out that provoked a lot of discussion. And so what happens is your exhibit can be, in fact, something that provokes your research question because of some idea or some concept that comes up in it. Or you might, in fact, have a research question that helps be demonstrated by your exhibit topic, or your exhibit source, I should say. And now the next one, the one that you'll use the most, are actually the arguments. The arguments are all of those different sources that are engaging and discussing your topic and if you find really effective sources, you'll find that they're all having a conversation across your topic in these different sources. Now, the last one is the method. A method can sometimes be the most difficult one to understand or to grasp, but you want to think about it in terms of providing some kind of guiding concept, something that sort of leads the way, this is my nice little flame here, leads the way so that when we're thinking through all these sources, you have a nice way to understand and put together. And some folks think of this as perhaps maybe a lens in sort of literary terms to help sort of move our analysis and provide us for a, a way of thinking about our analysis of these different sources. So once we identify these different sources, we might have only one or two background sources, especially if we have a shorter research paper. Then we have our exhibit here to get us thinking about what our topic is. We have our different arguments there to acknowledge how people are thinking about it, as well as our method as that concept that helps sort of bring it all together. So the question then sometimes comes, you know, what is a good example of thinking through how to put these in order? Now I like to think about it in terms of having your exhibit to begin with, right? You have your research question, something that provokes your research question. You're saying, hey, 
we need to think about this. And then you can say, but first, let's also think about a little bit of background on this topic. So you can move from saying, we have this idea, let's think about what is some established way of thinking about this topic, right? And then that moves nicely to our method. Because then we, we have a nice concept or some guiding procedure to think about how we want to start thinking through the rest of this research, which then leads us to all of our different arguments. So we have a more narrow way then to come back to all these different arguments and negotiate those. And sometimes something that happens too is more analysis of our exhibit might come back and forth in the arguments as we're discussing ways that the topic comes up. So something else that happens too is more exhibits might even come up in these, in these arguments as well. So we can put exhibits there as well. So I hope that helps thinking through how the research process happens. As you can see, some of it can move around, but you can see that you don't necessarily have to find only arguments that support where your topic is going, right? They don't all have to be in support. You're merely acknowledging what all this research is saying, but you're providing a nice way to arrive at a nice clear way of interpreting what is this very salient, new, relevant idea that's happening right now. And hopefully, how can we arrive at some conclusion where we can walk away with some new understanding in different ways that help us complicate or answer our question. Thank you.